Inflation in the US is more than expected last month, but rising energy prices keep investors and the Federal Reserve members quite concerned about the possibility that the disinflation that we see today could soon slow or even reverse. Now, in China, news around Country Garden actually continues fueling the property crisis, and that unfortunately tempers the enthusiasm that we saw these last couple of days around the Chinese stimulus measures and their effectiveness. So, welcome. This is Swiss Code's Daily Market Talk. So released yesterday, the latest CPI data showed that the U.S. headline inflation ticked higher from 3 to 3.2 percent last month. That was slightly lower than the 3.3 percent penciled in by analysts. Further good news was that core inflation eased to 4.7 percent in July from 4.8 percent expected by analysts and printed a month earlier. And on a monthly basis, we've actually just seen the smallest consecutive advance in more than two years. So obviously, that's relatively good news, but I'm saying relatively because the rising energy and crop prices these days do threaten to heat things up in the coming months in terms of inflation numbers and inflation's downward trajectory could actually be rapidly spoiled. So that's certainly why an increasing number of investors out there and the Federal Reserve's Mary Daly warned that this was not a data point that says victory is ours. And indeed, looking into the details of the CPI data released yesterday, the fact that it's 20 percent fall in gasoline prices is what majorly explains the overall decline in the U.S. headline inflation number is concerning per se, as we see oil prices spike these days. The barrel of U.S. crude actually bounced lower after hitting the $85 per barrel psychological level at yesterday's trading session. However, the latest OPEC data did indicate that we would see a sharp supply deficit of more than 2 million barrels per day this quarter, as Saudi Arabia cuts its output to push prices higher and keep them there. And this gap between supply and demand could further widen as global demand continues growing and shift to alternative energy sources around the world is nowhere fast enough to reverse that upside pressure in global oil demand. But, 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 but on the other hand, we also know that these rising energy prices do fuel inflation expectations around the world and further rate hike expectations around the world as well due to the rising inflation expectations. And that means that oil bears are certainly not far waiting in Bosch to actually start trading the recession narrative yet again and start selling the tops and $85 per barrel level could actually be that level that could somehow trigger that downside correction despite the evidence of tightening global supply for oil and increasing gap between rising global oil demand and falling supply. But but for now, American crude is up by 27% since the end of June, and it will at some point start slowing the disinflationary trend. So that's pretty much mathematical. Now, one thing that could actually help pressuring inflation lower is that expected fall in shelter costs in the coming months, which again rose almost 8% last month. So we will keep an eye on inflation numbers. But anyway, coming back to the overall inflation talk and overall market talk, yesterday's slightly softer than expected inflation numbers in the US. And the initial jobless claims data, which actually printed almost 250,000 new applications for unemployment last week. So that was the highest number in a month, actually sent the probability of a September post for the Fed to above 90% at yesterday's trading session session, although the U.S. two-year yield advanced past the 4.85 level today and the longer-term yields rose as well in the U.S. with a weak 30-year bond auction, which saw the highest yield since 2011, and major stock indices stagnated in the U.S. as well. The S&P 500 was up by only 0.03% yesterday, while Nasdaq closed 0.18% higher, as Walt Disney rallied as much as 5%, even though Disney Plus missed subscribers subscription estimates last quarter and said that it will increase the price of a streaming service. 
So what do I know about what the future holds, right? But I actually think that raising prices of your streaming service while you are actually losing subscribers quarter after quarter doesn't seem to be the magic formula to me. But it's maybe, but just maybe, because Disney is also considering a crackdown on the password sharing like Netflix did, which combined with higher prices for a streaming service could lead to a Netflix-like profit jump further down the road, but that would be only just one-off jump. So I'm not really, really convinced from the strategy, but anyway, today I as well be on the July PPI figures before the weekly closing bell, where core PPI in the US is seen further easing but the headline PPI may have ticked higher to 0.7% in July, probably on higher energy, higher crop and higher food prices of these days. In the FX markets, the US dollar index consolidates above its 50 and 100 day moving average levels and the index is now just, just below a long term ascending channels base. The euro dollar on the other hand sees support at its own 50 day moving average level that stands near the 101. 960 level and the pair could actually benefit from further weakness in the US dollar to attempt another rise above the 110 psychological mark in the coming days and weeks. Now in Europe, the natural gas prices have been a major, major talking point this week as the TTF futures spiked 28% on Wednesday this week and that was on concerns that strikes at major export facilities in Australia could lead to a 10% decline in global LNG exports. Yet, 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 European natural gas traders came back to their senses yesterday and that sent the TTF future 7% lower at yesterday's trading session as, well, the European inventories are about 88% full on average, which actually simply means that the Europeans don't necessarily need to buy natural gas at crisis levels. Plus, we also know that the industrial demand in Europe remains weak and that's due to the tightening financial conditions imposed by the European Central Bank interest rate hikes and Europe also buys LNG from Norway, from Algeria, from Qatar and Nigeria. So this week's massive, massive move in nat gas prices in Europe seems to be mostly overdone and as a result we shall see some more downside correction on this end. Now, last but not least, we have to talk about China because the property crisis in China is being further filled by a potential default of country garden, mind you, which is one of the China's biggest, biggest property companies and which recently announced that well, the company may have lost up to 7.6 billion US dollars in the first half of this year as home sales in China slumped and well, the government stimulus measures unfortunately didn't bring buyers back to the market. So oops, that's really bad news. Equities in China slumped further at today's trading session as property crisis is not benign, mind you, because China's local governments have plenty, plenty of debt and their major source of income is, well, land and property sales. So you basically see what happens to the local debt to income ratios of local governments when property prices slump, right? Well, they simply spike. And that debt burden will actually prevent China from rolling out the kind of stimulus measures that we are used to, you know, the massive stimulus measures because the Chinese government and Xi Jinping himself, well, doesn't want to further explode these debt levels for local governments. So the entire economy is suffering normally elsewhere as well when the property market is sick and this is unfortunately what's happening in China today as well and add to that the shattered investor and consumer confidence after years of government crackdown, the shrinking demographics in China and the property crisis as we talk about it and deflationary pressures, well, it looks like the Chinese economy could be on path for a longer period of economic stagnation and that could actually temper the latest investor optimism regarding the Chinese stimulus measures that has 
you know, certainly uh, feel the appetite in Chinese stocks lately, but that are not sure to be effective in the short to medium and even to long run. Now, Hang Seng's technology index fell to the lowest levels in two weeks as all members fell, except for Alibaba, which jumped after beating revenue estimates last quarter. And you know what other well, China-related stocks jumped at yesterday's trading session? Well, it was the European luxury goods stocks. They also jumped yesterday. Yesterday on news ad, China lifted a ban on Chinese group travel, including destinations well, in Europe. So this is all for this week. I'm Ipek Özkardeşkaya and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful, interesting and supportive messages. I hope this episode of Market Talk has also been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments your reactions and your questions below as usual and follow us on instagram on x and on linkedin for regular market updates and subscribe of course to our youtube channel for daily market comments i will meet you again next week and until then good day trading and have a lovely weekend